Hi, it's Dwyer, GamblersAdvisory.com, a free site, BettingAngle.us, a free site. Today is Monday, June the 21st, 2021. Well, it's happened. An MMA emeritus has fought a professional boxer who himself is a former champion and has beaten him. Let's talk about Anderson Silver's victory over Julio Cesar Chavez Jr. Let's talk about a blueprint MMA fighters can use. This is the fight to watch. This offers a clear blueprint against certain types of fighters. But first remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now let me just say, you know, when Floyd Mayweather, who recently made over $60 million fighting Logan Paul, goes to the bank or goes to a vendor, they don't stop and ask him, hey, player, in which fight did you make this money? In other words, 60 odd million dollars is 60 odd million dollars. Whether you make it in a hard fought match against Terrence Crawford, Errol Spence, or whether you make it fighting Logan Paul. So the money is so big, the pay-per-view numbers are so huge that these celebrity fights are going to continue to happen. Let me also point out, too, that our culture has changed. It used to be that we used to like to see people in gowns and tuxes on shows like the Oscars and Grammys, right? These days, nobody cares about those shows. You just want to be entertained. You're into reality. You're into brands. So when you have an MMA fighter with a distinctive brand and a boxer with a distinctive brand and the two want to meet in the ring and actually have a boxing match, hundreds of thousands of people are going to buy it on pay-per-view. Right? The participants know when they go to shop on Amazon, Amazon's not going to ask them whether they got the money the hard way or in a celebrity match. These celebrity matches are going to continue. Folks, they're going to grow. They're going to continue to be riveting. So if you're an MMA guy and you're about to fight a boxer, right? You're retired. Uh, you still have fans. They know who you are. You have a crowd, you have a brand, and you're going to fight a boxer. What Anderson Silva has shown us is the following, right? First rule, in my opinion, don't fight a boxer who is a jabber. Right? Understand, you don't want to fight Tyson Fury. You don't want to fight Ali. A guy who can stay outside and just riddle you with a great jab is exactly who you don't want to fight. Stamina is already a concern for an MMA guy who normally doesn't go past five rounds. Right? A jab allows a boxer to force the MMA guy to fight, which will drain his stamina. In other words, Tyson Fury wouldn't even have to get in the pocket against you. He could stay outside, hit you with a jab while draining your stamina. Let me also point out, too, that you need to fight a fighter who's relying on pot shots or, if you want more action, a fighter who, like Chavez Jr., is relying on hooks. So your choice of opponent is very important. In other words, you're not going to fight Lennox Lewis. Let's let's make this more realistic. Right? Let's talk about the older guys. I wouldn't want to fight Lennox Lewis because Lewis had a great jab, one that hurts you. At a certain distance, only Lewis will be able to hurt you with the jab while conserving his energy. 
No, you want the boxer to have to spend energy. You want the boxer to face a challenge in winning rounds. Right? You don't want a boxer who can rely on a jab, boxing skills, to conserve his energy and deplete yours. The second rule, I think, looking at this film, is you, the MMA guy, want to be the jabber, right? You want to have the superior volume. It will win you the slow rounds, right? Your whole thing here is to be able to conserve your stamina, to look credible to the crowd, and to keep yourself out of harm's way. What the silver fight showed us is Rather than be Conor McGregor and think that your best path to victory is to catch the boxer, hurt the boxer, win by KO, right? To bypass the boxing skills of the boxer by landing big shots, right? Rather than have that viewpoint, the Logan Paul point of view against Floyd Mayweather, what you want to do instead is to focus on getting your own credibility with the crowd and on winning the slow rounds with a boxing strategy that conserves energy. Let me point out too that if the crowd sees you shooting a jab, keep in mind it's a boxing event. You're the outsider, you're the underdog, you're the MMA guy. You have to win over the crowd. You have to show the crowd that you're prepared. When you come out and you're shooting a jab and you have volume, in other words, the crowd sees you working, but you're working in a way where you're protecting yourself, right? You're not leaving yourself open for big counters by throwing big punches where you're all in and defenseless after throwing the punch. No, you're in a tight construct. You're operating from outside and you're the one throwing more punches than your opponent. And the best way to do that without depleting your strategy is with a jab. The crowd's going to think, hey, he's serious here. Hey, our MMA guy here has come in prepared to box. Let me also point out, too, that if it's a celebrity fight, chances are you're fighting an out of shape, past his prime, older boxer, like a Julio Cesar Chavez Jr., so your jab might just force this older fighter to have to fight back more than he or she wants. Your jab might tire out someone who is already out of shape. Understand, Chavez Jr. was so out of shape that he blew the way in by multiple pounds. So when Silva comes out here and he's forcing Chavez Jr. to work, he's forcing an out-of-shape Chavez Jr. who's already forfeited tens of thousands of dollars by failing to make weight against a guy with less than five boxing matches. Right? Think about it. The guy was unfocused enough where he couldn't make weight in a celebrity boxing match against a non-boxer, right? Chavez Jr. must have thought to himself, oh, you mean I actually have to fight now? I actually have to work? I actually have to go through a jab to find Anderson Silva? I have to spend time in this fight trying to find a Anderson Silva who's hiding behind a jab in the ring? Right, folks, it wore down Chavez Jr., Right? MMA guys need to think not only about their stamina, but about the stamina of their past, their prime opponent. Also, let me say this too. Have some showmanship. The crowd's looking at you and they know you're not a professional boxer. They know you're an MMA emeritus guy. Right? So when you come in the ring, be prepared to 
have some moves that you're going to use to challenge the boxer. So, in this fight, there's a great sequence where Silva gets caught in the corner by Chavez Jr. Right? You're thinking to yourself, uh-oh, this could go bad. Right? Silva, who is shooting a jab, is doing very well in the middle of the ring, now is caught in the corner against a hooker. So, of course, what does Silva do? Right? He eggs Chavez on. He turns the negative into a positive. Right? He's been backed into a corner. So, of course, what does he do? He basically implies that Chavez can't hurt him. He waves his hands. He tells Chavez, basically, here, here I am, come get me. Make your move, player. Right? Well, understand, that's very important, because you're in the crowd and you're like, oh, Silva's unafraid of Chavez. <laughs> right? Not only that, it's showmanship. He's waving at Chavez. He's really waving at you. He's letting you know, you know what? I'm MMA, and I'm here comfortable in the corner against this boxer who can't hurt me. Of course, as Chavez comes forward, Silva wisely covers up. Right? That's not the time when you want to be defenseless. That's not the time when you want to push your luck by giving the other guy countering opportunities. So understand, be a showman, but know when to be a showman. Let me also say, too, that Silva knows how to be a showman without exposing himself to great risk. So he looks energetic. He's bouncing on his toes, right? Just jumping up and down. That's not putting him at risk of getting hit with something. But yet it shows the crowd, hey, look at me. I'm dancing. I'm ready for this. Right? Let's remember the crowd includes the judges. Very important people. So there are rounds here where Chavez looks tired and flat-footed. Silva's just standing in front of him, not really landing anything big. But he's bouncing on his legs. If you, like me, went into this fight thinking, oh, Silva's the obvious underdog. This is a boxing match, not an MMA contest. This is not UFC. And then you see Silva in front of the boxer, bouncing. Right? You're going to say, oh, he's serious even though it's not translating into a lot of punches being landed. In other words, this is the showmanship side of the sport, right? So, Silva's bouncing, Silva's waving his hands. That plays well to the crowd. Let me also say, too, again, you're fighting a past his prime older boxer, right? So when the boxer backs away, really more from exhaustion than any punches, come forward, right? Get the boxer on his back foot, and then you come forward, forcing him to work, throwing a jab. Folks, the visual is jarring, because again, everyone knows it's a boxing match, not an MMA match. So in this match, Chavez Jr. gets tired a little later in the fight. He starts backing away. Silva follows him. Silva's throwing jabs. Now, I didn't see Chavez Jr. get caught with anything big. But let's just say, as I was watching the visual, I was thinking to myself, this is Silva's round. Right? Silva's focusing on volume. Silva's focusing on showmanship. Silva's throwing a jab. He's not wasting a lot of time with a lot of, you know, uh, straight right hands and stuff like that, or straight left hands, right? He's just throwing a jab. He's just keeping the thing going. So when the boxer backs away, it looks like the boxer's wilting. It looks like this MMA guy has jumped into a new sport and has the boxer on the defensive. That's exactly the image that the MMA guy wants to portray to the judges and to their fans 
who have paid to see them in a boxing match. Let me also say too, Silva, and I don't think Silva ever goes for the knockout, but Silva has a hard punch that he can throw at certain times where he's not overextended. So in this fight, it's an uppercut. You'll notice Silva gets Chavez backing up. That's when Silva decides to throw an uppercut, right? The beauty, the beauty with throwing the uppercut is since Chavez is backing up, Silva has figured out that if he throws the uppercut, his hand's up after he throws it. So unless Chavez is prepared for it, and I don't think Chavez would be prepared for it because there's not a lot of tape on Silva in boxing matches. Unless Chavez is anticipating that uppercut and has the counter already planned, Silva can throw the uppercut without getting countered. Now the reason it's important is I believe it's an illusion. Right? Silver throws an uppercut and you say, oh, Silver's going for it. Silver's not going for it. The uppercut is more for appearance purposes. You're thinking, oh, Silver's doing something other than throw a jab. <laughs> right? <laughs> but yet, Silver's making sure that he's only throwing that uppercut when he can't get countered. So this way, you're watching the fight and it looks like Silver's actually trying to land some tough shots. But I don't believe Silver ever decides to go for the stoppage. I believe Silva's entire game plan is one over style is one of style and volume over substance. Right? He's trying to be busy. He's in better shape than Chavez Jr., which these days isn't hard to do. He's keeping Chavez Jr. busy. It's Silva, the MMA guy, who turns this into a stamina contest. I believe he came to win on the scorecards, not to get the knockout. And that's what he did. Right? So if I'm an MMA guy, I'm looking at the older fighters who are a bit out of shape, who aren't high volume who aren't going to jab me to death, who I could shoot a few jabs back away from the pocket, who I can count on them running out of gas in the middle of fights. I'm going to have some pre-programmed moves to appeal to the crowd, right? So when the guy's too far away from me and there's a lull in the action, I want to be the one waving to the crowd. In other words, this is different than the Logan Paul technique, which was effective against Floyd Mayweather, which was grab, hold him, right? Go for the stoppage. Logan goes for it at the end of the first round. Go for the stoppage early. When you don't get it and the other guy's stamina starts to take over, be prepared to hold the other guy, to lean on the other guy, to slow down the fight, right? What I'm saying here in this fight is the opposite. What Anderson Silva did was come out with the idea that I'm not going to knock out Chavez Jr. Right? I'm not. What I'm going to do is keep him busy with the jab. I'm in better shape than this guy. I'm going to play to the crowd. And if this guy gets tired, I'm going to win those rounds. That got Silva the fight. I believe this is the blueprint. If I'm an MMA guy and I'm thinking about jumping the fence into boxing, let me also say too, this fight's very important because now if you're an MMA guy fighting a boxer, when you're talking trash at press conferences, you can say, hey, Anderson Silva did this. It can be done. It's already been done. MMA can win. We've already proved it. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I hope you leave your comments in the comment section of this video. Thanks for stopping by.